Welcome to HQ Live. Today we're going to be talking about stitch in the ditch techniques. Denise is going to walk us through some awesome steps on that. So welcome. And just so you guys know, we really are live today, aren't we, Denise? We sure are. So I'm Kim Sandberg and I've got, I've already said your name like five times. Denise Dowdrick. <laughs> Denise Dowdrick. We're both uh, studio educators here at Handy Quilter. And we are really excited to keep moving along with this new series um, with the ST. Last month, we spent a lot of time, and actually Christina and I spent um, a fair amount of time showing you different basting techniques to use on the ST. So now we're on to the next step. So Denise, That's what's right. the next step that you like to do when you're quilting? That is a really great question. So I have a little quilt that I'm planning some custom quilting on. So my next step is I need to stabilize because right. if I don't stabilize it, I can end up with some fullness, some wrinkles, and things could just get out of control. So I like just putting some, some framework on my quilt before I get started. I like that. Okay, so the first thing we have to do though is we need to press our quilt. When I'm stabilizing, I like to stitch in the ditch mm -hmm. and I need to make sure I have a ditch to stitch in. Correct. So let's talk about that. I'm gonna flip my little sample over here. Okay. And let's just take a look at what I have here on the back side. I have carefully pressed each seam flat. And I've actually pressed to one side. I've pressed to the dark side here, except this one here I pressed open. This is not something I would recommend, but let's face it, sometimes we wanna press open to reduce bulk. So um, I'm gonna show you some tricks for dealing with that too. If you've already pressed it okay. that way, it's just fine. So this seam's pressed open and then this, these other two seams are pressed to the side, right? That's right. Okay, so everybody can see the difference between the two. Okay, so we're gonna just flip that over. Okay. Okay, so when I'm talking about stitching in the ditch, I wanna stay right alongside the edge of the piecing and you'll notice when you when you actually press your fabric to one side, one side ends up a little higher than the other. Mm -hmm. And so that lower side is where I want to do my stitch in the ditch. And another little tip, when I'm doing stitch in the ditch, I actually kind of hold my fabric open just a little bit. Oh. That way, as I'm stitching in the ditch, that, that stitch line goes right where I want. And then when the fabric relaxes, it covers that stitching that I did. So it just really blends seamlessly in there. It kind of disappears, doesn't it? It really does, it really does. So it's a really great way to get that stabilizing in there, but you don't have to see the stitches. Um, and, and some people actually like just doing stitch in the ditch for their quilting and they don't go mm -hmm. back and add other quilting and it can right. be beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, just check with your, your batting manufacturer to see how far apart um, stitching should be placed to keep that quilt together. So right, right. always a good idea. Um, so should we just jump right in and start yeah. doing some stitching? Let's do. So um, you always want to baste using your preferred technique and absolutely. you guys can absolutely refer to the video we did last month about that. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to quilt. So okay. what's the next step, Denise? Next step I want to do is I need to check my machine settings. So and I'm also going to be doing some ruler work. So okay. I have taken the time to put my sure foot on. Mm -hmm. And if I were on a frame mounted machine, I would also want to put a ruler base on. Yes. Just to keep things safe and stable. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, and I've got a big piece of batting and backing here. So as I'm stitching on my Amara ST, I am making sure that my little sensors are covered. Perfect. That way I get really great regulated stitches. So. Let's talk about those stitches. Yeah. I like stitching in cruise mode, regulated mm -hmm. cruise mode at a low speed when I'm doing rulers, a little bit higher speed when I'm doing free motion. Um, some people like precision. That's okay too. Mm -hmm. So it's just with really rulers. about what are you comfortable with? Right. So I also like increasing my stitch length. I like a little bit smaller stitches when I'm doing my stitch in the ditch because it kind of helps that thread disappear a little more if I've got a smaller right. stitch. So. Right. So, and then because I know I'm gonna be doing rulers, I've also set my needle in the down position. So when I right. stop stitching, the needle will stop down. I like doing that with stitch in the ditch, even if I'm not doing rulers, just to kind of help me keep my place. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I okay. do the same thing. It's it, that way you don't end up with a little wobble in your seam, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yep. Speaking of wobbling, I wanna talk about one of my favorite stitch in the ditch techniques, and that's where I just, go for it. Okay. I don't worry about a ruler. Okay. I just try to eyeball it and keep it 
um, as straight as I can. Now, because I'm on the MRST, I have a little more control of my fabric here that yeah. I can move, but I just need to decide, is it gonna be better for me to start at the bottom and try to try to stitch um, as I'm going up? Uh -huh. Or am I gonna be able to see that ditch better if I start at the top oh, and, and move my fabric you. that way? You see what the difference yeah. is there? And you know, that's one of the great things about stitching on a stationary machine is you have that option. You can I do it. I really do. Whichever way. Whichever way makes works you best comfortable. For you. I can even turn the fabric. Yep. I will say I find as I'm stitching on the stationary machine, um, I go back to learning cursive in second grade. I turn my I turn my fabric like Slightly. I turn my paper. <laughs> but it's okay as long as you keep track of where you're moving to. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and start up here at the top. Okay. And that way I can clearly see my ditch. Mm -hmm. And I do want to bring my bobbin thread up first. Right. So I'm just going to use my screen here and just do a needle up down. Okay. There's my bobbin thread coming up as I move the fabric out of the way. Perfect. And then I'm going to bring that back together. And you can either needle up down a few more times. Um, you can use the foot pedal, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. just to lock that stitches, those stitches down. Perfect. So I'm ready to go. Okay. So um, remember not to hold your breath as you do this. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so a little true. nervous. I want to stay right just on that inside, on the lower side. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's see how I'm going to use my foot pedal. I'm in cruise mode. And I'm just trying to stay as close to that as I can. It's oh, looking really good, Denise. I'm using the foot pedal instead of the button on the screen. And that way I have a little more control to just stop when I want to. I not like too that. shabby, right? Yeah. Now, if you find you're not staying quite as straight as you'd like, you can bring in a ruler, which right. I have here. Mm -hmm. And if I put that ruler next to my seam allowance here. I need to remember that I'm stitching about a quarter inch away mm -hmm. because my foot's taking up some space. So I'm just kind of eyeballing that. Right. And you're actually using the uh, stitch in the ditch ruler. I am. Have. This is actually the ditch ruler. I thought it was the yeah. perfect fit for this. Yeah, it really okay. Is. Let's just head on in. I've got some ruler grip on the um, bottom of the ruler too, which really helps me kind of guide the fabric. It does, doesn't it? Okay. Especially when you're uh, quilting on the stationary machine because you're moving everything. The machine is holding still, you're moving the ruler and the fabric. Absolutely. So having that little extra. Really. Well, Denise, that looks really good. And I use contrast thread nice... so you can see it, but yeah, yeah, when you stay in the ditch, even when you're using um, a contrast thread, it really does kind of disappear. So let's talk about thread for a second. What what color of thread would you normally use when you're doing stitch in the ditch? Would you match it to this, this fabric or this fabric? That is a great question. Remember how I said I want to stitch on the low side of the mm -hmm. fabric? I am going to match my thread color to that low side. So I okay. would use probably an off-white, light mm -hmm. green, just something that's going to blend into that background fabric here. Perfect. Perfect. And you know, I forgot to mention this earlier. If you guys have questions, please, please put them in the comments. We've actually got Christina sitting here. She can read um, any questions you guys have. So if you guys have questions about what's going on, be sure to just pop those uh, pop those into the comments and we'll answer them. Absolutely. Okay, so Denise, you've showed us two different techniques. So just going for it and stitching, mm -hmm. using a ruler. I know you've got one other technique, especially when you're doing it on top of a an open seam. On right? top of an open seam. Yes. Pressed so open seam. Let me Sorry, get not over a, here like, to open this seam. pressed open <laughs> seam. Now, I have a couple of quilts that I pieced a long time ago, mm -hmm. and there's lots of intersections, and I pressed everything flat. Yeah. So someday I'm going to pop in and quilt those, and I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to go in and repress everything. Right. I'm going to show you how I handle that. Cool. And because I'm on the ST, I'm just going to flip my fabric around. Isn't Very that nice. convenient? Very convenient. Okay. So I need to... I need to make sure that I'm not going to stitch in the ditch when it's pressed open because right. all I'd be doing is stitching right on the thread that I used right. when I was actually piecing it. That's not going to be very strong, is no, it? No, no. I could end up with a quilt that starts falling apart because I've weakened the thread in that seam allowance, and I don't want to do that. Exactly. I've even, where the needle has hit some of that thread and snapped it, and then you have seams that try to oh, open, so what? you don't want that. No, what a headache. That would really upset me. So. 
I am going to do a little serpentine stitch okay. here, a little decorative stitch. I love it. And uh, it's going to still secure the quilt. It's going to hold everything together and it's going to add a fun little decorative element. Okay. So you go ahead and stitch that. Christina's got a question for us. What stitch length are you using? Okay, that's a great question. So the question is, what stitch length are you okay. using right now, Denise? Right now, I'm at 12 stitches per inch. Okay. I, depending on the quilt and the type of thread I'm using, I'm using um, 50 weight thread right now. Mm -hmm. I might even want to bump up to 13 or 14, just depending on what I'm doing. But okay. having a nice small stitch is going to help secure everything. I like this serpentine stitch. And you know, the thing is, when you... You choose to do something like this. If you do it consistently throughout the entire quilt, it looks really cool. It becomes a design choice. It really does. Isn't that cute? Just those little serpentine stitches. I've heard some people call this a wiggle ditch. Yeah, a wiggle ditch. You can see that. We zoom in here. You can see those little wiggle stitches right there. All right, we've got another question. What's the question, Denise, or Christina? What weight? Red, do you use and do you ever use bottom line on the top? Okay. And can you do the same technique on a regular frame mounted long arm? Okay. So the question is uh, what thread weight are you using? Uh, can you use uh, what was it? Um, bottom line in the top. And can you do the same technique on a frame mounted machine? So Thread weight okay. is what that Thread you're using right now? That I'm using right now. I'm using So Fine from Superior Threads. It's a 50 weight. Mm -hmm. Really, really loving that thread. But I could also use bottom line. Bottom yep. line's a 60 weight. I use a lot of bottom line um, in my bobbin, but I also use it on the top. Yeah. Because why not? It's gorgeous. There's lots of colors mm -hmm. and it's really fine. So it blends in beautifully. Um, the next question was, can I do this on a frame mounted machine? Yeah. Of course, yeah. you betcha. The The only difference really between doing the stationary machine to the frame mounted is I'm moving the fabric. So I don't have to, um, I'm not quite as limited on where I wanna start pushing the machine away from me, pushing the machine. I can just maneuver the fabric. So, um, but we can still do all these techniques on the frame mounted machine. Exactly, yep. All right. Okay. You want to see another little decorative one? Yeah. Yeah. Show us so another one. This one's a little serpentine, mm -hmm. but you know, get out those catalogs of decorative stitches that your machine, your oh, yeah. domestic machines can do and try them on your stationary machine or your frame mounted mm -hmm. machine. I'm going to just do a little loop now. Okay. I like that. Isn't that cute? How fun. Kind of gingerbready. Very fun. Really have some fun with this. I feel like Christina would be couching right now. I know. Oh, we can do couching while we stabilize the quilt. <laughs> so we've got that little loop rolling right there. I think I can say that the loop is rolling. The loop right? is rolling. I like it. So we've got we've got the little loop rolling right along there. That's really nice. You know, I think that's so fun because it really just adds a fun element to the, the quilt, especially if you're just going to do the stitch in the ditch for your quilting. That's right. Which I love to do when I want the piecing to really be the star of the quilt yes. because the stitch in the ditch emphasizes all that piecing that you took a lot of time it to do. It really does. So, you know, it, it's a great way to not only keep your quilt together, but show off, have some fun mm -hmm. um, and use some decorative contrast threads if you want to. You don't have to just use fine thread. If I'm right. going to take the time to do decorative, maybe I want to use a heavier weight thread, like a 30 or 40 weight thread even. Have fun. Something fun like Magnifico, mm -hmm. shiny. Oh, yeah. Um, so you, we have one other technique written down here, and that's okay. actually doing an echo. So instead of stitching directly in the ditch, how would we do an echo? Okay, let me show you. I'm going to come on over to this other line here. You guessed it. I'm going to flip my fabric around yeah. because I can. Well, I love that. Um, stitching, like pushing the fabric away from you, it makes it easy to see exactly it where you're really, going to be really stitching. It really, really does. Yeah, so instead of stitching right on the line, I could choose to echo. I, I could do one side or both. This is another great great technique if you have pressed your fabric open. Mm -hmm. If the seams are open, just come off to the side. And I can just use my ruler and line that right up on my seam. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna keep me a quarter inch away with the sure foot that I'm using. But did you know you can also use the echo feet That's with right. rulers? So I could play with my echo feet here too. I love that. So I'm going to just stitch a little bit here. Do that echo quilting. And maybe you even want to just 
change it up here and there, go back and forth, stitch part on one side and part on the other. Oh, I like that. Isn't that fun? You've got a lot of good ideas here, Denise. It's just a great way to um, keep the quilt together, but have yeah. some fun while you're at it. I love it. That is fantastic. And you can stitch there from either side. Absolutely. That's so great. So those are just some fun tips to get your quilt stabilized, set the framework for the, any future quilting you want to do, or mm -hmm. do decorative mm -hmm. stitches, and that's your quilting done. It's stabilized, it's quilted all together. So lots of fun different ways to do this. Yeah. So do you usually do stitch in the ditch over the entire quilt before you tackle the rest of the quilting? That is a great question. And yes, I do. Okay. I typically, whether I'm doing a frame mounted quilt or a stationary machine quilt, I am going to stabilize the whole quilt before I start. Okay. That's going to help me keep the quilt square. Mm -hmm. It's going to help prevent weird little puckers here and there. But setting that framework also kind of helps me um, time myself. So I know um, I'm going to do these four blocks and they've They've already got nice. their stabilizing done. So I'm going to do that for the next 20 minutes. I'm going to get up and take a break. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to move on to the next section. So um, like got to remember to take care of your posture That's while right. you're doing that That's too. That's right. All right. So you've actually got a project that you're going to start on. I so let's do. pull this out. And you're going to go ahead and show us uh, kind of what you've got. First of all, what you've got planned as far as the quilting goes. And then um, do a little bit of stitching on this one. All right, let's show off. So let's pull this over here. So Kim set up a challenge for <laughs> all of the educators to do a black and white quilt. And we could have one pop of color. So I made a fun little quilt. It's just going to be a little table topper. Mm -hmm. I've already pressed everything. I pressed my seams to one side. I have basted it using, um, I used a fusible spray based. Mm -hmm. So everything's basted. But do you see how there's still kind of just a little bit of Looseness. almost fullness? Fullness, Looseness. yeah. Yes. Well, especially because you've got curved seams here. So you've yes. got some bias that's going to pull mm -hmm. a little bit. That's right. But because I took the time to press everything really well and I pieced it well, this is a really great candidate for stitch in the ditch and some custom quilting. So, um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go through and I'm going to stabilize this entire quilt before I move on to actually filling in with some designs. Mm -hmm. um, but I started thinking about the designs I wanted to do before um, I did my stitch in the ditch to see if I want to echo, if I want to do it on the straight line. So I auditioned using some quilters preview paper. And this is like really that. great clear plastic. Mm -hmm. I set down a little edge of some orange painters tape here. So as I was drawing, I didn't draw off onto my quilt because that's really sad when that happens. Um, so I auditioned some different designs. I'm going to move this around because it's kind of easy to see what's in the white sections and not so hard to see on the darker sections. Um, so, and... I came up with a plan to do some little wishbone quilting. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to stabilize and then maybe go back and do a little echo. Oh, I like that. Um, so and, stitch in the ditch and mm -hmm. echo. Stitch That's in the ditch option. and echo. I haven't decided yet. Maybe you can all help me decide on these sections here. Am I going to do feathers in these melon shapes? Or am I going to do, um, well, we can't see it on, on the dark side, but on the light side we can. Or I could do some straight line quilting Ooh. across that. That would be a little more modern looking. Yeah. So going to be straight lines or it's going to be feathers. I haven't quite decided. So I'm open to feedback there. Okay, I like so, that. And that's what we'll be doing. Um, we'll be doing our next quilting session. Today we're going to focus on stabilizing now that I have that plan down. Okay, awesome. We've got a question. So okay. go ahead, Christina. Okay, you used the word stabilize again. Mm -hmm. Can you clarify what you mean by stabilize? Are you talking about the products that you use to stabilize or just the stitch in the ditch? Okay, so we were asked, what do I mean by stabilize? And what I mean by stabilizing is I mean holding the quilt together, keeping all three layers. I've already pre-basted, which, which does do some of that for me. But now by going in and doing some stitch in the ditch work, that's going to keep everything together so my blocks don't shift 
And it also is going to allow any other designs that I come back and fill in here, it's gonna help them kind of pop. Right. So, because I'm gonna add some, um, some flatness here. So these areas are gonna poof up a little more. All right. Okay, what machine are you working on? And talk about the magnetic collar and what oh. machines is the Oh, <laughs> so which machine are we using look today, at Denise? This. We are using our Amara ST and look at this magnetic collar. Our Amara series has magnetic collars, so I can keep my little tools here. Mm -hmm. I love having my snips close, but I still have 20 inches of throat space, just like the frame mounted Amara machines. I have all the lighting features mm -hmm. available, just everything we expect on the Amara frame mounted machines. We have we have that in our, in our stationary machine as well. But we have one more secret weapon. Yeah. We are using the lift table today. This is my favorite part about this Mine machine. Mine too. <laughs> um, because Kim and I are almost a foot difference yes. in height, but we can both comfortably quilt on this machine because I have a little panel of buttons here and I can push a button to drop the machine down for me or raise it up for Kim. <laughs> or we can even raise it up more and then stand in front while we're quilting. We want to make sure that we're comfortable while we're quilting. So sometimes it's a great idea to change your posture, change um, between standing and sitting if you're comfortable with that. But also I can um, I can use whatever chair I'm comfortable with as well because I can make the height of the chair match the height of my table. So one of my favorite, favorite features. Awesome. awesome. So uh, you want to do a little bit of stitching here on this. You're going to show right. us because I am not seeing a lot of straight lines on this quilt. And you were no. you were demonstrating stitch in the ditch with straight lines. That's so right. How are you going to accomplish this? That's a great question. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a plan. You have and a plan. It involves a lovely ruler here. We've got a curvy ruler because there's no straight lines or very limited straight lines. Mm -hmm. I like using a curvy ruler just so I can use that to help me guide around these curves. Okay. Um, I'm, I've switched to a gray thread now. So mm -hmm. with that gray thread on, it's gonna blend. When I pressed, um, pressed my fabric to one side, now I'm gonna be stitching on the black fabric in some places and on the white fabric in others. So I thought mm -hmm. gray was a great uh, compromise to mm -hmm. blend between those two. Yeah. So, and I'm going to just start off at the edge of the quilt okay. and just come on in over here and do a little bit of stitching. Do a little bit of stitching. Okay. I'm just going to bring my bobbin thread up. I always start there and I'm double checking to make sure I have my needle stopping in the down position. I'm going to just do a little bit of stitching to lock that down. And you might even want to take take the opportunity before you start, maybe you want to do a little bit of straight stitching along the edge of your quilt. Absolutely. Just again, I'm, I'm just locking all of that down. On our frame mounted machines, um, oftentimes I will bait, base the throat space that I'm, I'm working mm -hmm. um, and I accomplish this edge stitching at that same time. But since I used a spray based, this time I'm going to just do it a little bit differently. Okay. I have two different curves two different profiles. Oh, yeah. So I'm just gonna use whichever one I feel like matches the best and just go on in and go for it. That's really great. And when I need to stop and adjust, I completely stop with the right. needle down. I take my foot off of the pedal. If you're using the button on the screen to stitch, you can still tap that pedal to stop mm -hmm. stitching. Right. Yeah, when you're moving rulers around on the a stationary machine, you really, really have to stop stitching because you have to, you're moving the fabric anyway and trying to move the fabric and change the ruler position doesn't fly so well. No, it's a, definitely a little tricky. And my spray basting is really helping to hold everything together so I don't get ripples and bubbles, but this is just gonna tighten that all up. And I'm just going to finish coming along curve this curve. I'm just following this one curve I like that. all the way around, keeping it simple. You'll notice ruler work is not fast work. No, but it's precise. It is very precise. And so I'm just taking my time. Well, trying to uh, narrate what you're doing always tends to uh, slow you down a little bit. Too, just right? a little bit. <laughs> 
Okay, so I did that curve with the ruler and now I'm gonna come back up and stitch around the outside edge before I come. Yep. I'll stitch okay. along the outside edge and then I can come in. But this is basically how I'm going to complete this quilt. I'm going to just do one curve at a time and come in and just follow around. I love it. And just do it one block at a time. So it keeps things, keeps things simple. And then I can take a break. I love it. All right. We have another question. Is this the speed that you usually use? And are you in precision mode? Okay, so we had a question about speed. Is this the speed I usually quilt at and am I in precision mode? So you'll notice when I start stitching my needles going up and down, so I'm in cruise mode. If I were in precision mode, I push down on the pedal, nothing happens unless I move the fabric. So I'm in precision right now. And even, my, even though my foot's on the pedal right now, because I'm not moving the fabric, the needle's not going up and down. Right. So I actually feel like I have a little more control with cruise. So I have a very low cruise setting on my machine right now. So I'm gonna head back to cruise because I like seeing that needle move up and down. Just helps me feel like I'm a little bit smoother. Um, and yeah, this, this, is, this is how I usually quilt. I, I like being in cruise, just a really low cruise speed with rulers. Um, it really depends. I'm not going to give you a number because I think it's subjective. And I think you need to <laughs> practice and play and see what you're comfortable with because that comfort yeah. level is different for everybody. I know Christina, Kim, and I have all talked about this and we use different cruise settings. So yeah. I'm not going to give you a number. I'm going to give you homework and you get to play with it you and see what you're comfortable it. with. Say, I would consider low anything under 100. I agree. But you, exactly. You need to find which speed works best for you. That's true. All right. Well, I think, have we covered what you wanted to cover today? I with think so. And I've got, Dutch, securing yeah. that quilt, laying down that framework. Mm -hmm. All right. I've got maybe an hour of work to do here to get yeah. everything stabilized. And um, next time we meet, I'll be ready to fill in some quilting. Awesome. That'll be awesome. so fun. So be sure and join us next time, uh, next month on the fourth Tuesday. It's actually because February is that lovely month with exactly 28 days. Um, it'll be March 28th next month. We'll be doing a live again going into this. But first, we have an item of business we need to yes, get into. Yes, we do. So you guys, check out the quilt behind us. This is our Quilt Along quilt. We actually have uh, Jen Eskridge, who works with us here at Handy Quilter. She is amazing. And she got this quilt done like lickety split. We sent it to her and I swear she had it in the mail like the next day. So she went ahead and pieced this and we're starting our quilt along today. So we were, we're so excited to have one that's completed to show everybody. You guys can see the fun springing colors she used here, the turquoises and yellows. It's so fun. And she used a design from Quiltable to quilt it. She, uh, yeah. It's, it's a gorgeous quilt. So we need to talk about what we've got today. So first of all, we have a link in the description of this video for these pages here, here, and I'll put this right here and Jacob can do. So this is our quilt along and we've got our schedule. We've got the schedule right here. So this first month, we're gonna be focusing on uh, choosing your fabric and cutting out your pattern. Then uh, we're going to move on to piecing the blocks. We're going to put together the blocks. We're going to do the quilting. We're going to bind the quilt. And then we'll reveal the quilt in July. So we're giving you, I think, plenty of time. What do you think, Denise? I think so. We, we need this much time, too, to get this done. Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> we're super busy. <laughs> but, but it's fun. This, this document's really great. So the first, play, first page is the schedule then when we go to the it's actually four pages so we go to the second page and we've got some hacks that we came up with for uh, making this quilt so this first one here is the layout and then the cutting instructions down here that jen used for the smaller version of the quilt you guys can see that she only did three blocks across and she did four blocks up her quilt is 54 by 72. So she did a smaller version because the full size version is, isn't it 90? 90 something. It's big. It's really, it's really big. And then over here we have, uh, Christina came up with a little bit of a, 
alternative way to cut it out according to the pattern. Um, she, she just changed a couple things. So we included these hacks. We're gonna show you these in just a minute. And then here at the end, we've actually got a couple of coloring sheets. So we've got one that's got like the gray tones on it. And then we've got one that doesn't have any, it's just the blocks. Um, you can download this for free so that you can follow the quilt along. And we have something really awesome to tell you guys about this quilt along before we move over to take a look at what we've done um, over here with our things. So last month, uh, the pattern was free. That's right. For a week. And then we put it up on the website and we know that people have been purchasing it. So we went to the powers of the bee here and we said, That's you know what? We're starting this quilt along again. We really want this pattern to be free again. So this pattern is free again on the Handy Quilter website through tomorrow, which is Wednesday, March 1st at midnight Mountain Standard Time. So depending on where you are in the world, that's going to be a little different. But we we got permission to sneak that in, didn't we, Denise? I know. We had to beg. You would believe the links Kim went through to get that for you. <laughs> pleading, pleading. So please take advantage of that. If you've been a little hesitant and you've been like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to join the quilt along. Well, hey, you've got every reason to do it now because the pattern is free. Once again, it's free through March 1st, which is Wednesday, tomorrow at midnight mountain standard time. All right, well, Denise, let's take a minute. Let's walk over here. So we've got okay. a table set up right over here with uh, what what we're each doing for the quilt. So we, we're gonna show everybody, um, Denise, Christina, and I are gonna show you the fabrics that we've picked and kind of where we are in the process so you can see what we've got going here. So let's go ahead and move okay. over to the table here and we'll show you guys what we've got rolling here. So I'm gonna switch, switch over on cameras. All right, so first up we've got my, um, here's, here's my color palette. So I have this lovely green Essex linen that I'm using and I showed everybody, I had my fabric picked out last month. So oh, it's stunning. And then I'm using some nice kind of sparkly this is all stuff from my stash. So sorry, I can't, I don't have like specifics on what they are, but I'm using the hacks that Jen showed down here for cutting mine out. But there's one thing that I changed. Oh, now I got to find mine. Where did I put it? I did my coloring page, which I put away, obviously. Okay. So I've decided to make my quilt a little smaller even than Jen did. I am just doing nine blocks. And mine's going to end up being 54 inches square. And I colored it in here and drew that little boundary around it so that you all can, uh, can see what I'm doing. And I'm doing uh, the black and whites with some gold with that green in the center. And the only green marker I could find was a um, highlighter. <laughs> so it's a little, it's a little bright, but that's okay. So just to show you really quickly, um, so I cut um, nine and a quarter inch, uh, nine and seven eighths, which I actually rounded up to 10, cut them in half. I've got all of those cut here. And then I also used a special ruler that I've got right here to cut some of my half square triangles that are just to fill in. Um, this is a Fonz and Porter half square, I think it's called the half square triangle or quarter triangle ruler. You ever use one of these, Denise? I haven't, but I'm intrigued. So I love I love using this. It makes it really easy. You cut strips and then you cut them into the triangles. Then my other thing that I'm doing, when I cut, um, when I start cutting uh, the squares and turning them into half square triangles, sometimes things aren't so great and I wanted to maybe do a little bit less cutting. So I'm using um, paper, the paper that has the half square triangles on it and you just follow the arrows and stitch and then you cut to make the smaller ones. So I cut my fabric into eight and a half inch squares, did two right side together and stitched them with this. And you guys can see kind of where I am in the process. I've got part of it done, part of it wow. not done. Looks like I've got a question. Did you pre-wash your linen? No, I did not pre-wash any of my fabric. Pre-washing, I don't, I don't pre-wash. Um, another thing to note, because this is a smaller quilt, 54 inches square, most likely this is not a quilt that I will use for anything other than to hang up on a wall and look at. So I'm not so worried about um, 
the washing issues. I wouldn't worry about it either. Yeah. But I'm, I'm excited to come to your house and look at it with you. Well, we'll hang it here in the studio for a while <laughs> and then and then we'll move it back to my house. So, okay, Christina, there's another question. Can you just remind everybody where the free pattern is? Okay, so there's a link in the description of this video down below, and that's where you can click to get that free pattern. So it's included in the description. And if it's not there, it will be there shortly. <laughs> but it should, it should be there. We we include, okay, I got I got the thumbs up from Jacob. It's already in the description. So you can go ahead and click on that. So um, Denise, let's move on to your fabric. Let's show everybody okay. what the fabric you picked out. Well, I'm really excited. And unlike Kim, I pre-washed everything <laughs> because this is going to be a bed quilt. And the main reason I pre-washed is my main inspiration fabric had already been pre-washed for another project okay. and I never got around to making it. So this is fair game as far as I'm concerned. So I picked out some other fabrics. I've got all these fun pinks for my half square triangle. I've got navy blue to do the little points in my stars and then this gorgeous coral so for my little pinwheel. I'm I am so excited to get started. So I pre-washed everything. I even starched it to make oh. my my cutting experience happier. <laughs> but um, I'm also going to deviate from the rules a little bit from the pattern instructions. And I am going to cut strips of fabric. And then um, I have a similar ruler to what Kim's using. Um, and I left it at home today, but it's really similar to this. And it's called a strip tube ruler from Cozy Creations. And I am really excited because after cutting my strips, piecing those strips, and then cutting on the lines using their directions, I am going to end up with blocks that are pieced, and I don't have to go back and trim them again. They're Very done. Nice. So that's I, I love this ruler for that same so, reason. And and I kind of did what Kim did is I made myself a little plan. And again, I planned everything around this fabric here. So I used colored pencils. I I couldn't even find markers. And it has, this fabric has all these yellows in here. So I auditioned it with yellow and decided I didn't love it. But I took the time to color it out to see if I'd like it and just decided, no, I don't think so. So I used my little handout, colored it in two different ways. And this is how I came up with my color scheme. I love how you did that, Denise. You don't have to, you don't have to color in the entire the thing, whole do you, thing to get a no. feel for it? No, but I know this is going to be a big quilt, and I just colored a little bit just to give myself a, a chance to see what is this going to look like. I eliminated the yellow. I have a gorgeous yellow. It's just, it's going to be in another quilt. And I pulled together the pinks, and I might even do something a little different. I, I'm thinking I might even add some sashing Ooh. and be really different. So... We'll see how it comes together. Yeah, stick around next month and Denise will let us know whether she actually cut some of that out. Yeah, it'll be fine. All right, well, Christina is going to slide in here really quick and Denise is going to hand over Go her headphone. Hand over. Okay. Denise is going to share her mic here with Christina. <laughs> We're going to get it's nice okay, and comfy. Christina, we're only showing your hands anyway. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, okay, so for mine, I've already shown the fabric that I picked um, in previous episodes because all of our viewers chose my colors for me. So I'm gonna be using the pink and greens and purples. Now, there were some questions about what if I've already cut my fabric, am I gonna be messed up now because no. we're doing different things? No. no, you can totally follow the pattern as it is written. We're just showing some different ways that we're doing some of our things. Okay, so one of the things that I did with my pattern is that I made mine huge. So everybody else is making theirs a little bit smaller. I'm going to add an extra row to make mine a king size. So mine's going to be like 90 by 108, I believe, which means I have a lot of half square triangles that I have to make. Yes, you do. So to make that a little bit easier, since I am using fat quarters, what I did was I just took one of the fat quarters. We'll open this one up. I'm doing this all one handed because I'm holding my mic with the other hand. <laughs> So I've got my fat quarter and then I've got the white fabric that I wanted to use and I drew on there a grid. So I wanted three and a half inch half square triangles. So I did about four and a quarter inch squares. So I just did a square grid. I drew the diagonals and then I stitched a quarter of an inch on just the diagonals. 
okay. for this whole entire thing. And then when I go back, I will cut every single one of those lines that I drew. So horizontally, vertically, as well as diagonally. And I will end up with 16, 32 half square triangles from this one piece. So okay. I was able to do that with all of my different fabrics. Um, so a quicker, easier way than cutting out all of the triangles and sewing them together. Yeah. I'm doing it very efficiently, I like to think. So I'm gonna be borrowing your ruler though to trim yeah. down my half square triangles once I get to that point. But yeah, so I've got baggies of half square triangles that I've already done but I've got a ways to go. One other thing that I'm gonna be doing differently is that on the pattern, the center of the pinwheel is all one color. On mine, I'm gonna be alternating. So I will have, can you hold that for a second? I'll have one row that will be purple, one row that will be green, purple, and green. Oh, cool. And the reason I did that was because that was just the fabric that I had available to me. And so I'm gonna make it work. And we'll see how it turns out in the end. Now, a couple other questions that came up while you guys were talking earlier is, are we going to show people how to quilt this? Yes. We are going to go through and do some different quilting, different styles. Um, the quilt that was hanging up in the background, they asked if that was an edge to edge. Yes. It is an edge to edge. And it it's is. the patterns from Quiltable. Do we know the name of that pattern? We can post it in the comments. Okay. We will find out the name of that pattern and post it. Um, and we'll try to remember to mention it next month as well. Yep. So, okay, I'm gonna hand the mic back over. All right, so thanks, Christina. Um, wow. It's gorgeous. We, it, is, it is gorgeous. So we are gonna request that all of you that are doing this quilt along with us, be sure to use the hashtag, and we double checked, it's this one's all ours. It's hashtag handyquilterqal. So make sure any, any uh, posts that you do include that tag handy at handy quilter. And then next month, what we're going to do is show some of our favorites that we've seen on social media. So be sure to use that hashtag. The hashtag is on this paper. So if you forget it, you guys can print this out. Um, hashtags are included down here. So we've got those. And yeah, we're, we're going to show the entire process. Next month, we'll actually give some tips on piecing. Um, we'll bring one of the machines in here and do that. Okay, we've got a question. Okay, can you just clarify the four pages? Is that in addition to the pattern? Yes. And are they all kind of linked together at this point, or do they need to do two separate things? Okay, so everybody's asking if this these four pages are in addition to the pattern. Yes, they are. These are in addition to the pattern. There is a separate link that is in the comments that you download this PDF directly from. The pattern is separate. So you'll need to download the pattern. These are just, it's our, um, it's the schedule. So you can follow along and it's our hacks with a couple of coloring pages so that you can jump in, plan your fabric this That's month. Right and get get everything cut out so that next month we can start working on piecing. And if you get everything cut out and you want to go ahead and start piecing, that's just fine. There's no quilt police. We won't tell anybody. It'll yes. be fine. Some of us are a little further along on this project than others. I, I do have my fabrics pulled together at least. So yeah. I've got some catching up to do though. <laughs> exactly. Well, we want to say thanks to you for joining. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe and be sure to post uh, using that hashtag handyquilterqal or just handyquilter to be featured in one of our upcoming episodes. Uh, we'll see you again next Tuesday with another Watch and Learn episode. And in the meantime, have fun quilting. <laughs>